right, let's look at another solution given to us by Jonathan Wong. Let's go through this. So you had to find the point on the line. Again, here it is. And what Jonathan did here, if you look at it, is the point of intersection of a line and these two lines. Now something I can tell you about the point that's closest to the origin or any other point is you can guarantee that the normal of the original line, so this is the normal, okay, a normal is a line perpendicular to another line, so that's considered a normal, and we'll be looking at that more in vectors, but the idea is this normal will always be the closest point to the origin. Now, you were not told any of this, but some may have this pr as prior knowledge. Now, you would have to say somewhere along the lines that these two lines are perpendicular. Note I don't see that on here. So if I was to take off a mark, this is where I would take it off. The goal is, is you should need, you need to tell me that F and G, or the points um, Y and G, so the equations Y and G, Y is perpen, let's go back, Y is, y is perpendicular, to G. So the idea is that equation number line Y is perpendicular to line G. And that's so we need to have a right angle indicated there. Why are we doing that? Well, because this, now that, because we know the equation of the one line, we can find the slope of the perpendicular line with no problem. What we do is you find the slope of Y and you take the negative reciprocal of that line and that becomes 4, 3. What you can say is that you've got 4, 3 as your slope of this G line. We know that that G line must pass through 0, 0. So you find the equation of G equals 4 thirds X. Well, G and Y must intersect. They intersect because of the fact that they're, it's the normal and they're going to, and this point has to go, this line, G, has to go through zero, zero, and what I can tell you is it must cross through this line, so it must intersect at one point. So you find the point of intersection, which is what Jonathan did here, and we find out that the point of intersection is at g equals y. We set the two equations equal to each other, and lo and behold, we solve for x. Funny enough, there's the same x that we just had in the last question. You then plug in that x value into the coordinates to find the y value. So, oh look, 3, 4 is the point of, is the point on the line. It's not the coordinate, it's the point on the line. So again, is the point on the line. And the folks, this is how, is an alternate solution will give you this. Note though, there no calculus was used here. And if you were asked to use calculus to solve that, this is where you might lose marks. So be careful and note that if we're dealing with calculus, you'll be asked, whether in university or in, or in this course, you'll be asked to make sure that you use calculus. But this is an alternate solution and it is a valid solution. All right, let's go on to the next one. No, oh, that's a lot of work there. We'll go through it slowly. Example number three. The total surface area of a squared base open top rectangular box is 12 centimeters squared. Find the dimensions of the box such that the volume is a maximum. What does that mean? What are we looking for? Again, it is the total surface area of a square based open rectangular box is 12 centimeters squared. Surface area, folks, is like you were to take the box and open it completely out so that it's flat. Find the dimensions of the box such that the volume is a maximum. All right, what does that mean? Well, let's make it out. Square based, square base, so there's a square on the bottom, and it has rectangular sides, and these are your rectangular sides. There is no top, so we don't have to worry about an extra square being on top. And basically, we know that this has a surface area of 12 centimeters squared. So if I call the, the side of the square X, then the side of the rectangle is called Y. And I can do that and label all the sides so that I know that the volume of this box is X times X times Y. 
x times x times y, length times width times height. Now, surface area of this box is going to be 4 xy's plus, so xy's being these four red rectangles, plus x squared being the bottom. And that has to equal 12, because that's what the question says. So what should we do now? My idea is that by looking at this, you see that there is one y all by himself. We could isolate for this y, so we can make an expression in from here, an equation from here, of y in terms of x. So that's what we're going to do. And we get 12 minus x squared all over 4x. What will that give us? Well, we can plug this in back into the equation, and we get x squared times 12 minus x squared all over 4x. Well, when you simplify this, you'll end up with expanding and simplifying, you'll end up with x squared times 12 over 4x, which is 3x, and x squared times minus x squared divided by 4x is x cubed over 4. Well, what does that give us? Well, now we have the volume simplified to an expression, and we want to maximize this volume. So we set the derivative of this volume equal to 0. What does that give us? Well, 3 minus 3x squared all over 4 is the derivative. And that is equal, set that equal to 0. When we deal with that, we end up getting a value for x to be x squared is equal to plus or minus 2. Well, knowing this, well, we know that x is a dimension. So could we have a negative 2 as our dimension? The answer is no. So x is equal to 2. What will our y equal? Well, remember we already had that isolated over here. So when we plug in x equals 2 into here, we find out that our y value is going to be 1 centimeter because 12 minus 4 is 8. And on the bottom, you have 4 times 2, which is 8. 8 divided by 8 is 1. So the dimensions of this box that maximizes the volume will be 2 centimeters by 2 centimeters by 1 centimeter. All right, on to the next question. Example number 4. Ruthie leaves his house at 1 p.m. and heads east at a speed of 60 kilometers per hour. Adam heads south at 50 kilometers per hour and reaches Pruthvi's house at 2.30 p.m. When are Pruthvi and Adam closest to each other? So you're to state the time to the nearest minute. What does that mean for us? Well, we need to be able to draw this out. This is one of those type of questions where you either get it, you don't, and there's not much of in between here. So it's going to be very important that you kind of follow along here. If you need to, rewind the video and go through it step by step. I will do my best. Here we go. We have, this is Adam heading south. This is Pruthvi heading east. Both are heading at a spe constant speed. Pruthvi leaves at 1 p.m., and Adam also leaves at 1 p.m., so they're both leaving at the same time. Pruthvi is heading away from his house. Adam, not knowing that Pruthvi left, is heading towards Pruthvi's house. Adam will reach Pruthvi's house at 2.30 p.m., so it takes him an hour and a half to travel that way. Now, so house, that is Pruthvi, and that is Adam. So, how long, how far away is Adam from Pruthvi's house when he starts? The answer to that is 75 kilometers. Why is it 75 kilometers? Remember that it takes an hour and a half for Adam to reach Pruthvi's house, traveling at a speed of 50 kilometers per hour. That means that if, you take, if we use the distance, speed, and time, idea, distance equals speed times time, 
you take the speed times 1.5, meaning the how many hours it takes to get there, and we find out that it takes 70, it's 75 kilometers away. Now, Pruthvi, in the meantime, is traveling in that distance away from his house. So what is this line? Well, this line represents the idea that Pruth, as Adam gets closer and closer to Pruthvi's house, Pruthvi is leaving further and further away. So that at some point, they are the closest to each other. And this purple line represents how far Adam and Pruthvi are to each other. What does that mean for our solution? Well, we let X represent the amount of time that has passed to get from Adam to uh, the amount of time it has taken to get, uh, that has passed from Adam leaving his house and Pruthvi leaving his house so that this line is the closest to the house. There is Adam and Pruthvi are the closest to each other. How do we do that? Well, 50x is the distance is, sorry, 50 is the speed times the time. So speed times time is the distance that Adam has traveled. Over here, coming this direction, it's going to be 60x, because again, that is the distance that Pruthvi has traveled. Speed times time. Remember, x is the amount of time that has passed. So, we need to figure out this value. We find out that that black line, that inside part of the right triangle, is 75 minus 50x. 75 for the whole thing minus 50x gives us this remainder. And we can use the distance formula to calculate this value. And here it is. This is the distance of the purple line. All right, we're going to stop now and head to the next video to continue this problem. See you in the next video.